Hello everyone, the topic of this video tutorial is the data gap filling section of the QSAR toolbox, more specifically, the implemented methods for filling data gaps. The data gap filling section has several functionalities, which are divided into two main subsections. The first subsection contains the data gap filling methods, trend analysis, read across and QSAR models. The second subsection provides functionalities for executing and or creating automated workflows. As mentioned above, this tutorial is only about the data gap filling methods or the functionalities available in the gap filling section. Which is the most suitable data gap filling technique to use depends on the case. Users can also generate multiple results with different techniques and then decide what is the most reliable result. Trend analysis allows building a regression equation based on the experimental data and the corresponding bioavailability parameters. It is used on quantitative data such as 96 hours, LC50 for fish or other aquatic organisms and when the number of analogs is sufficient to generate a statistically robust trend. As a rule of thumb, users may consider trend analysis when there are at least five analogs. Read across can be applied to quantitative and qualitative data points. It considers the experimental values of the closest analogs to make a prediction for the target chemical. It is more commonly applied to human health endpoints such as skin sensitization, AIMS mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, etc. In general, read across should be used when a limited number of highly relevant analogs with good quality experimental data is available. QSAR models are pre built external model, such as the ECHOSAR model by the US EPA. For each general endpoint tree level, models are already implemented to predict the respective endpoints. As you see, the number of implemented models is shown in the form. When the predictions from external models are considered reliable, they are a valid and quick to generate alternative or supporting evidence for trend analysis or read across results. Let's continue with the example from the tutorial on defining categories. In summary, for the target chemical 2, 4, dichloropyrimidine, the target endpoint was defined in advance, namely skin sensitization EC3 associated with the local lymph node assay. All relevant databases were selected, those highlighted in green. The category was defined based on protein binding alerts for skin sensitization by OASIS. As a result, 49 chemicals with 147 experimental data were collected for EC3. To predict EC3 of the target chemical, read across will be demonstrated only. Select the cell corresponding to the target chemical and the target endpoint and click read across button. A new dialog appears showing the possible inconsistencies, and you should pay attention to the data to be used for read across. This dialog consists of four sections. The first section shows all the metadata fields associated with the current predicted endpoint, along with the respective values of the fields and the number of chemicals and data points. In this example, the only inconsistency is related to the native scale slash unit, where we can see that 14 chemicals associated to 16 data have values expressed according to the skin sensitization 2 esotox scale, that is positive or negative, while 38 chemicals and corresponding 131 data are expressed as EC3. The second section is for the required unit or scale. All relevant scales on the basis of which the current experimental data can be converted are listed in the third section. Here there is usually a default selection as in the present case, the skin sensitization 2, esotoc is selected. It converts experimental data into two categories, positive and negative. The last section contains information about the number of converted data points. In the current example, we are going to use a different scale, and that is the EC3 ratio. This means that the EC3 values will be used for prediction, but not the corresponding skin sensitization categories. With this selection, 131 points will be used in this data gap filling session. The 16 data reported according to the ESITOC scale cannot be converted to EC3 values and therefore cannot be used in this data gap filling session. When data can be converted to the scale used for the data gap, the QSAR toolbox automatically converts them. Confirm the selection. An additional message appears informing that 8 data points for 8 chemicals will not be used for prediction due to a missing descriptor value. 
This means that the QSAR toolbox is unable to calculate the log cow of eight chemicals. Since the predicted log cow will be the independent variable of the trend analysis that we are about to perform, these data cannot be used in this data gap filling session. Confirm the message. This is the data gap fill chart with all chemicals from the data matrix represented by dots. The EC3 value for each chemical is on the y-axis and on the x-axis is the value of the bioavailability parameter. Currently these are the logarithmic values of the octanol water partition coefficient used by default for most or the endpoints. The dots on the graph are with different colors. The color legend can be visualized by going to the information section and clicking on the legend tool. The closest analogs of the target chemical are used to predict the EC3 value of the target. The closest analogs are the brown dots in the graph. Additional information is displayed at the top of the screen. There are so-called helpers that inform about some observations related to the read across graph that might be helpful for the user. Open the helpers, click on the first exclamation mark. It says that there is data with qualifiers and that this type of data is usually not suitable for read across purposes, so we might decide to remove them. The second helper says that there are chemicals with different substance type. To remove them we need to subcategorize the chemicals. How to do that is shown in the corresponding video tutorial. Based on the five closest analogs, the predicted EC3 value of the target chemical is 0.66%. Here we can see that this prediction is based on five values. This is just an example as users are expected to refine the category to only retain the analogs that are most relevant to the target before making any predictions. There is also a correspondence between the dots in the chart and the chemicals in the data matrix. When you click on a point in the graph, the chemical that corresponds to that point in the data matrix is immediately highlighted. Congratulations now you are familiar with the data gap filling methods of QSAR toolbox and more specifically how to apply the read across method.